What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about FPD simulators on the channel and kind of a personal, this is, this is very personal to me. This is kind of a personal story of my experiences with FPD simulators, computers in general. I've been on the Mac since early 90s and every single year it seems that Apple is not letting us update our computers and our phones for shorter and shorter amounts of times. What I wanna do in this review is, I wanna go up from the AM20, which I reviewed a while back. This was around a $500 PC that will, it will run FPV simulators, but I wanna dedicate a gamer version because it looks like Ace Magic also makes some dedicated gaming ones. And if you see the X back here, this is the G1. It is much larger than the little AM20 here. I like this one for travel, but if you wanted to have kind of a dedicated FPV simulator system in your house that you can just pretty much watch movies, stream, do any type of video editing or stuff like that, maybe a more intensive graphics card, we're gonna check out this G1 today and see how it does with popular FPV simulators like Velocidrone, DRL, and Liftoff. And I wanna see how the frame rates do uh, on our TV back here. We have a large Vizio 60 inch TV, so this should be fun. I'm gonna hook up my little uh, PlayStation 4 controller and we're gonna fly some simulators and see how this handles it and uh, see if it's actually worth the money. Because I think Ace Magic is a pretty cool company for having all these different little mini PCs. Uh, I really do love the AM20. So I'm excited to see how the G1 can stand up to uh, some of the, the cheaper, smaller options. Uh, I'm expecting a lot more power out of the G1. So here we go. Okay, so this is the, they calling it the Ace Magician G1. Mine doesn't have the logo printed like they do on the website. You'll see the newer versions. Maybe mine was a prototype. Um, it does have an AMD graphics card in it. It's the Ryzen 5000 series Radon graphics, AMD processor for uh, running any type of game that you would like to. And it also has 32 gigabytes of RAM built into this and a 512 gigabyte hard drive. On the front of my G1, I have a USB port, headphone jack, microphone port, USB 3C, as well as a power button, and it did not come with a mouse or a keyboard. Now on the back of the G1, I have a ton of ports in comparison to the AM20 here. It has pretty much twice the ports the AM20 has, but this one is just a little more portable. It still has a Ryzen card in it, but it also has an extra microphone port back here. It has an extra headphone jack, four USB ports here. It has two ethernet ports and two HDMI ports. And very bottom, we have our power AC port that comes in and it's a pretty heavy uh, power adapter as well that's included with it. And you also get an HDMI cable, which was a little bit short for me to reach my TV back there, but I used my own there for a six foot uh, extension. We also have an extra USB-C 3.0 port right there. And this one, like the AM20, it also supports triple monitor display. So it has four HDMI options to be able to come out and into a triple display 4K setup. So you can also come out not only from the HDMI ports, but also the type C port in the back. Now, as a computer guy, one of the coolest things for me was the AM20 has this trap door and you can open it up and access in the SSD. You have an extra slot here. You can get to your Wi-Fi card without having to use tools and you can pull things in and out of here should you decide to replace or upgrade them. The G1 also has a trap door. There's a button on the back of the computer. If you press that, it releases this whole panel right here. And once it releases this panel, we have access to the entire contents of the inside of this computer. So you can turn off the LEDs if you want, just unplug them, very similar cables to what we have in our FPV drones. You can also expand and upgrade in the SSD slots in here as well. And there's an open slot here for further expansion. Okay guys, the first simulator that we're gonna test out is Velocidrone. I'm just gonna go ahead and do single player here. We're gonna use my five inch freedom spec on here. It's the Switchback Zero Quad, five inch freestyle drone. Um, it is kind of a true X configuration. You can go in the quad settings and you can change pretty much anything. You can take air mode on or off, which is kind of crazy. Um, you can play around with the different settings in there. And it's also compatible with Betaflight, which is kind of cool. So if we continue, it goes into the different tracks. You can do tons of different tracks. You have saved users in here as well as ratings for each track, which is cool. So I'm gonna choose HDR Cargo 1.68 here because it has 238 five-star reviews. So we're gonna go ahead and fly 
and let's just see how fast it loads up the screen. Super fast. So I'm going to press F12 on my keyboard and that should bring up the frames per second at the top right hand corner of the screen. So um, now you guys can see my average frame rate so far starting out, I'm almost like 60 frames per second here. And I mean, as far as simulation goes, 60, an average of 59 is great. So it feels more fluid. And, and I've talked about Velocidrome before on my channel. This is probably one of my preferred practice freestyle type of simulators because I feel like it, it feels the most like real life. Um, I, I would say there's a, there's a tiny bit of lag here, but not half as noticeable as when I was using my iMac. So um, if you want to practice some Matty flips and power loops, these cranes are really great. So just practicing that Matty loop there and you know, try to get it a little closer and tighter in as you go around. Not perfect, but not bad. Now let's try just a, a power loop. And you can also do FPV racing against other people around the world, which is kind of cool. And I, I'm, I'm not a great racing and gates kind of guy. Um, I, I'm definitely more of a freestyle person. But looking at the average frame rate again at the top of the screen, it says 60 FPS right now. I'm getting an average of 59 again, which is freaking amazing. That's really great. And right now I must be in God mode because I'm not crashing at all. So um, you can turn that off and you can turn like pro mode on and that lets you fly more like real life. If you're gonna break things on the frame or you're gonna break props and things like that. And we can also play multiplayer on this one, which is cool. So if you guys wanna like create a room and do that, we did that before with liftoff, but I believe liftoff you can only have like maybe like 10 pilots at a time, but it's cool because you can hear everybody's voice. But super fun. Uh, Velocidrone for you know practicing multi GP racing just to get that muscle memory set up is really a lot of fun and, and I feel like this this simulator looks great I just flew straight into that because I was looking at my uh, my monitor here so again like yeah me on the, the racetrack not good Justin Davis is definitely not a racer I like to be free up in the clouds is where I want to be so again, like look, we'll have to see, we'll have to test out how the other frame rate um, holds up in the other FPV simulators coming up. But so far, I mean, I've been flying this for almost three and a half minutes now, and we're still at an, now we're at a full average of 60 frames per second here, which is really great. That's just freaking awesome. So you also notice that like this looks less realistic than I'd say the, the liftoff simulator, which we're gonna try next on this G1. Let's go ahead, jump now into, out of the TBS Velocidrone and into the liftoff simulator. Okay guys, let's go ahead and try liftoff now. We also have kind of a similar level like Velocidrone. This is sort of a like kind of a container cargo ship area. And we're just gonna check out what this looks like. Um, this detects all of the freestyle maneuvers that you're doing, which is kind of cool. So aileron rolls, you know, if you're gonna do a power loop, it's gonna say congratulations, you did a power loop, things like that. Um, and you can also turn on and off God mode, which is pretty cool. So with, with the lift off, I'm seeing like, it feels a little slower, like right away, um, but I, I can't get the frame rates to come up on this as well. So I'm, I'm pushing all the keyboard commands and F12 works in Velocidrone to turn on the frame rate, but I feel like this one is running full speed. It doesn't seem to be like, I would say like stuttering or giving me something super low, like five, ra five frames a second, which did happen to me when I was live streaming with my iMac. Um, and I thought that that would be just fine for liftoff. But apparently when I was trying to play with my friends uh, right here on the Drone Camps channel, we were having some serious lag on my side of things. Uh, maybe because I was running uh, OBS at the same time. But I would say this is just a little less real time than TBS Velocidrome. So, and, and the graphics look, you know, the graphics look a little sharper here, but they don't look incredibly better. I guess they look a little more like PlayStation 4 graphics here. 
which for you, if you don't mind sacrificing a little bit of graphics to get just a more fluid real-time situation going, and that's what you want for FPV Simulator. You want something that feels like the real thing. TBS did a great job of, of doing that for us. So kind of a split S there. And it's cool because you can, you know, you can learn and, and practice tricks that you wouldn't normally do in the simulators. And that's what simulators are all for. So as well as just getting that muscle memory down for things like a Matty flip, um, trippy spin, and things like that. Not bad. I, I have done better. <laughs> I think the last time I flew this, I was uh, getting more points. But it'll track your points as you fly it. So, so you know, lift off for, for freestyle is, is pretty cool. I can see a, like a little bit of motion blur. It's a little bit of a um, little bit of pixelization there happened on the really hard maneuvers. I can see some kind of like horizontal, uh, kind of right across the middle of the screen. I'm seeing a little bit of pixelization. I don't know if you can see that on the live preview here, but I do see that. So, so so far, Velocidrone is definitely the best simulator on the G1 so far. But it will run liftoff. And it runs it way better than my Mac does. So that's not hard to achieve. But let's go ahead and move on now to the next simulator in the bunch. We're going to fly the DRL simulator. OK, now this is the real test here. We're playing DRL simulator in fully, highly rendered settings. So we'll see how the G1 handles that. Um, and I'm just going to let it go ahead and uh, go to the main screen. We're going to connect. Come on, baby, show me what you got. So, so far it ran the first two games really well. Uh, I'm happy that it performs as well as it does for the Velocity Drone Simulator. That's, that's really awesome. So we're coming into the main screen now. It is loading and we can go ahead and fly. We can change. Let's just do freestyle. I'm a terrible racer. So we're going to do the original maps here. Let's go to um, the out of service park. Maybe they have a Let's do the, uh, let's do a different one here. Let's do the, the gates of New York freestyle. Okay. And let's go ahead and pick a quad here. We're going to use, let's see, three inch, four inch. Where are my five inch quads at? Go back. Let's use the alien R5. There we go. Let's do, let's do pro mode if it'll let us. It doesn't seem to let us. 29 degrees of tilt and 116 degrees field view. So we're going to go ahead and start this. Now we're going to see how it runs graphics in the gates of hell uh, freestyle. This is probably a little bit tough because I, I believe this one was indoors. Might be inside this. Oh no, we're outside. So we got cranes and stuff on this one as well. So um, this is cool. And, and, and right away, like I'm noticing it's definitely it feels a lot like it feels a lot like the the, the pace and speed of, of liftoff, but liftoff was giving us that horizontal pixelization across the screen, and the rates seem to be pretty low here. I saw a little bit of stutter just then, and you know, gra graphics-wise, DRL is pretty intensive. I need a better camera angle so I can see that crane coming back around. Just try to power loop things here. Oh, missed it. Little victory roll uh, for not hitting anything. So let's just go back again, uh, try a little Matty flip around this crane. This is a gigantic crane. Went through the inside there. And that's the coolest thing about simulators. So. I mean, what do you guys think about this, the way this looks? This looks okay. Uh, I feel like this may not be supported forever, so I would probably buy Velocidrone or, or Liftoff when it comes to these simulators. If you want support in the future. But I don't feel like it's wonky. I feel like it's running pretty good. It, and again, this one runs way better than it did on my Mac. I'm not really trying to dog out the Mac. If I had a brand new M1 chip, it would probably run um, great on that CPU and the new video processors. You just need 
ultra processing power for, for all these games. But it's cool. You can practice your freestyle and uh, maybe one day you'll fly like Vanny. So a ton of fun. Um, DRL does work. But I think my favorite so far definitely is Velocidrone. So let's just go ahead and give some final thoughts and uh, maybe some criticisms and what I finally think about this G1 computer. All right, guys, that's it for the FPV simulator testing on the G1. This is the Ace Magic G1, and I am happy to say that it ran all of the popular FPV simulators out there. So if you're looking for kind of a dedicated FPV simulator machine, to hook up to your TV, kind of like uh, having an Xbox sitting there for FPV simulators. You can use your game controllers on this with any of the simulators, and you can also hook up your FPV radio if you want to. Something like the uh, MC, the TX16S is compatible, the Max, the Zorro. You can also hook up the brand new Pocket that's also available to, to run on these types of machines, which is super great. So just plug in your USB-C cable and bam, you've got yourself a radio stick configuration instead of the little joysticks. These are not quite as accurate, but I feel like they ran the game super fast and, and even running it off Steam. I, I'm usually a little bit skeptical of some Steam setups if the computer is not fast because Steam seems like a heavy program to run. So it ran DRL, it ran Velocidrone, and it ran Liftoff flawlessly for me even better than my iMac sitting over there but that one's five years old now and the graphics cards just maybe can't compete with the new AMD graphics card so I'm happy with that and also if you scroll down on that page where uh, you see the G1 it shows now that you can also get it looks like a free keyboard and mouse set it's a wireless keyboard and mouse if you click the button when you buy it in, a, in the checkout, you'll get that for free. So I didn't get one. I wish they would send me their free uh, keyboard and mouse. But for now, I'm going to use my extra PC keyboard here and my Mac mouse to, to run the G1. So I'm happy to have done another uh, mini PC review. And if you like tech and stuff related to tech, definitely subscribe on the channel. We do all kinds of different reviews on power banks, electric bikes, skateboards, drones and pretty much anything electronics. We're moving more and more toward more tech on the channel, which I absolutely love, because first and foremost, like most of you guys out there, uh, I, I'm a tech person and a computer guy, so I appreciate you guys watching and checking out what's new and uh, what's been tested here on the channel and uh, for all the different simulators. So I'm gonna stick with Velocidrone, that's my favorite one, and hopefully we'll see you on an online party. Maybe we'll do one right here on the Drone Camps channel coming up. But thanks again for watching, guys. I'm Justin Davis. Take care and check out my link down below if you want to grab a G1 and make it your dedicated FPV simulator. I'll see you on the next one.